The Ziegler-Nichols reaction curve method will use information revealed by the process reaction curve. The reaction curve is the process response to an open loop step change. The controller is placed on manual. A measured percent of output change to the control valve is made. And the process reaction is observed by watching the process variable record. The process may make an immediate response after the step change. Or the response may be delayed by lags and dead time in the process. The time L it takes the curve to reach the most rapid rate of change multiplied by the slope S determines the controllability of the process. The higher the product of S times L, the more difficult the process is to control. When we make a reaction curve, it is desirable to have a fast chart recorder to record the process. One half to two inches per minute is suitable. Such a recorder is available in most control centers. We will now proceed to make a simulated reaction curve and interpret it for tuning adjustments. First, put the controller on manual. Line out the process at some desired place on the chart and observe the percent of output to the control valve. Make a definite percent change in the controller output. This can be measured on the output meter. We will make a 10% change. This is an arbitrary number. The smaller the percent change, the less upset to the process. Mark the chart at the exact time the manual step change is made. Make the mark plainly. Use a stopwatch and measure the time where the response begins to make a change and mark the chart again. This is time L. Watch the stopwatch and put a third mark on the chart equal to 2L. Try to time L where the curve makes a good clean break. Now we must measure the percent of full scale the process deviated during the second time period equal to L. By projecting the slope of the curve in the time for the second L back to the scale, we get a pen deviation of 20% scale. We are interested in percent of deviation, percent of step change to get the slope S of our curve. Remember, we made a 10% output step change originally. Our deviation in time L was 20%. So S equals 20 divided by 10 equals 2. We know S and we know time L. This is all the information we need to calculate the optimum response adjustments. But first, let's repeat the procedure using live instruments. Line out the process on manual. Make the percent step change. 
simultaneously start the stopwatch and mark the chart. Measure the time to the open loop response or the breakpoint of the curve. Mark the chart at the breakpoint. Let the chart run a second time increment equal to the first and mark the chart again. Transfer the slope of the curve up to the scale or read the percent of deviation off the chart. Divide the percent deviation by the percent step change to get the slope S. Now we will return to our first example. These are the formulas for the Proportional Plus Reset Controller. Substituting for S and L, we have the proportional band equals 222% and the reset time equals 5 minutes. These are the formulas for proportional plus reset plus derivative. Substituting our values for S and L, we have the proportional band equals 166%, the reset equals 3 minutes per repeat, and the derivative equals 0 0.75 minutes. For proportional only control, the optimum setting is 100 times S. For our example, S equals 20 over 10 equals 2. Proportional band equals 100 times S. Proportional band equals 100 times 2 equals 200%. Now for a few practical suggestions in regard to tuning. If the process cycles while on manual control, don't try to tune it. The external disturbance must be eliminated. A majority of control loops pose no special problem for tuning. Ballpark settings for different variables are shown here. Final adjustments can be made as time allows. A similar guide is in the workbook materials. A judgment has to be made concerning the system capacity for level, temperature, and some pressures. High capacity and dead time require wider proportional band, longer reset, and derivative times. The reaction curve tuning method causes the least upset to the process. If we have time to get nothing more than the time for the open loop response, we can calculate the proper reset and derivative time and adjust accordingly. The open loop response can be timed reasonably well with an ordinary watch. A stopwatch is better. The proportional band can then be adjusted experimentally with the controller back in service. Once proper tuning adjustments are determined, record them for future use. To become familiar with tuning methods requires practice. It is difficult to practice on an operating unit. We shall practice on a process simulator or a simulated loop in the skills lab. Now work exercise four in your workbook. 